Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I'm back. I know I was going to um, do some videos downstairs, like my last one, but um, people kept coming in the room and it just wasn't going to happen. And plus, anyway, it wouldn't be of the standard as they are up here on the proper web camera rather than the iPod. So I just thought I'd give it a rest, which is fine. Oh, and look behind me. There's a bed with nothing on it. That's amazing. Because uh, um, my husband freed up some of the drawers behind. So I could put some stuff in there. Now, at the moment, what I've just done is just put everything in there. So at least I know the space. What I'm going to do next is to sort it all out in such a way that I can actually find stuff. That, that's all right. So, what have I been doing? Okay, well, I've been, I have been making some stuff in between, like, doing the Christmas projects. Well, yeah, in between and around, just before, after. Uh, one of them was... Remember that purple rib scarf, the glittery one that I made? I actually made a hat to go with it. Um, I will insert a picture here so you can see. I'm sorry, I forgot to take the photograph of the hat on Vera. They're up there, the polystyrene head. So, I'm afraid I'm the model. Anyway, after I did that... I made a skinny scarf. This one's much skinnier than that one. And this yarn here, it's very, very nice looking. I don't know if you can appreciate the colour as I can here, because it looks vastly different here than it does through the screen. Um, it's made with Starcraft Signature Chunky, which I believe is now discontinued. And this particular colour is called Peacock, as I found out on the internet. No, actually it feels really really nice but while I was making it I was thinking uh, my palms are itchy, I don't like this <laughs> um, and I did get some more yarn of that in the colour autumn which I've started to make a hat with but I hadn't finished it off what happened was um, I finished my mum's scarf as you know what she got for Christmas and then as soon as I finished the scarf, I realised I had enough yarn to make a hat, but because I needed to post it, I, I needed to get cracking with that. So the hat I was making, I put it away, and then I've only just recently found it because I forgot where I put it. So after that scarf, I did obviously my hat, which I will show you next on Vera, uh, me rather than Vera. So. And then there was the divine hat, which you saw on one of my previous videos, which I made public on Christmas Day. I'd shot it in, um, when I finished them, I think it was early December, um, but I couldn't release the video publicly until after my, I knew my mum had opened the Christmas present, so, yeah. Then after that hat, the divine hat, I did another one, which I'll show you the photo of. It's my hat pattern, but this time I put a rib around it, as you can see here. And after that hat, and that was posted off, I thought, ah, I fancy making another scarf. So with that Robin Chunky, which I think the colour was pistachio, that's a better size width for a scarf. And just this plain crochet, half double crochet rib again. And that's with the Robin Chunky. Did I say that already? Okay. So after that scarf, I there was a lot of things I was doing in between then. And this was one of them, but this was after some of the loom stuff I've been doing. That, that was just a completely random hat. It's half double crochet um, with the occasional spike stitch. Um, it was intended for Vera size and I did increase in the crown Vera size and I've no idea how it ended up bigger that it fit Jack. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Anyway. It's turned out like that. And really, actually, that was the purple yarn there. That's King Cole Chunky, and I can't remember what kind of chunky, but it's King Cole Chunky. And this, I didn't have any... I didn't have enough chunky to complete the whole hat because I used it for something else first. So I just got some white, and I didn't have any white chunky. I had white iron, so I double-stranded it. And that's what I've done. And he looks all right. He suits that, doesn't he? I think I might have said the word loom, didn't I? All right, so if you'd have seen one of my previous videos, you'd have seen this already. 
as you can see it fits very very well. So yeah that was the first loom hat I did and that was it was Ollie wrap stitch and it was three three stitches and then the bottom one over the top two. And it leaves a lovely rib pattern I like that. Last September I got some a round loom set and of course I hadn't discovered discovered of course I hadn't um, used them at all they were stuck in the wardrobe because I was I was making them um, Christmas presents so, so I just put them away and forgot about them until well just before Christmas I suppose when I made the loom hat and the first set I got yes you heard that right first set um, I know it's been missing there's a, there's a scarf on that one it's I think it's called the mistaken rib it's on a line brand where um, pattern where you do it says 11 stitches but I thought that was too skinny so I made 15 it's just knit 2 purl 2 knit 2 purl 2 and then the final one is purl 1 and then you go back back and forth and that's how you get the mistaken rib it's very nice anyway there's a reason why I got that one out of the packet so. these look very similar it's um let me show you first I knit quick and yeah I've written some notes on there <laughs> Knit quick, which I've noticed online, it looks very similar to Nifty Knitter. And the, the reason why I say that is because the holes at the back. When I said that, that is not the first set I've got, it's because when I, I started to use that, I was I was quite disappointed. Not with the plastic and not with the pick or anything like that. The product itself was fine. I was disappointed that I was just limited to um, either two strands of worsted or chunky, bulky yarn, and I thought. Well, yeah, that's in the one sense that's really good because I've got some chunky yarns that I really just have no idea what to do with, and now I do. I've got stuff to do with them, and I'm happy with that. But I thought, well, I only use me double knits on there. So I got online, and my friend Google helped me find um, some stuff that had stuff. They're not stuff, are they? They're looms. Sorry, some looms that you could use double knits yarn on. So it doesn't end there. <laughs> this set which looks very similar and it is except now I'll pull out the smallest one and there is a reason why I'm going to pull out the smallest one okay. right, as you can see all of them are like this they have the extra holes for the extra pegs so you can either do a large gauge as it is or a smaller gauge now, I'll tell you about these pegs in a bit, which is fine. Um, and, yeah, they don't have holes on the back, whereas the, the Knit Quick did, which was why I thought it was very similar to Nifty Knitter. Right, all the loot large, one, two, three, and four, all the, the other looms have exactly the same size pegs, same amount of pegs in each set, except these two. This, this is at 24 peg loom and this is a 22 peg loom 22 fixed pegs not removable pegs of course it's more with the removable pegs and that's the only difference um, feel wise this is more substantial however even though I've used I haven't used this but I've used I'll show you yes another set sorry <laughs> and it's it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not. I thought it was going to be quite feeble, and it is, and it's fine. Nothing to worry about. It's just that when you feel these both together, you think you think there's a bit more to that. But this is deceptive. So when I say there's another set, I wasn't joking. But before I did that, um, I made sure it's one with extra holes. As you can see, I've already populated some po um, holes with the pegs. Now that's actually not a problem, because um, I, I made something with chunky yarn, which occupied the whole loom, and I managed to ignore those pink pegs as if they weren't there. So it's no issue with it at all, whether I keep them in or not. Because I did think, I was putting these pe um, pegs in, I was thinking, oh, I don't want this in out business, in out, in out, it might, you know, make the hole wider or the peg weaker or something like that. But I was able to work around it and there was no issue. And I have to say something about these removable pegs. They're sturdy. 
unlike something else. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's leading somewhere, but I'll talk about something else first, yeah? So what I've done on this loom, I saw um, that there's a, a YouTuber called Pam Loomer. Now, I don't know if Loomer is really her surname, but it's just a coincidence because she loom knits. But um, anyway, I thought that was really cool. Uh, she was doing a, a triangle shawl on the 62 peg loom. Now, I have the 62 peg loom, but I thought, I don't have, well, I do have enough yarn. But it's it's that one where, hmm, if you've seen any of my old videos, it's, I've got four balls of chunky, two of them the same colour, one of them's cream, and one of them's a slightly different colour. Now, I'd have to do some calculations as to find out when to introduce them, if I'm going to use more than one colour. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get going and try it out. So I thought, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just do a miniature version on, instead of doing the 62 peg loom, I'll lose the 26 peg loom. And I did. And it ended up like a little, like a neckerchief or a scarflet. Which way around? It comes off the loom. It grows from one side. And it grows all the way around, all the way around. And that's how you get the triangle. By the time you get to that bit, again, you don't join. You have the peak of the triangle and then you go back again. That clever that. So it, that, that's how the pattern emerges that way. But really at the end it's like that and I did crochet like she suggested some scallop edging. It's folded in. It needs washing and blocking. But there. And at the top I did some single crochet. But actually, because that's on the normally e wrap, you see it like that, it's presented like that. But when it's on the side, it, it seems to give you a whole new pattern, doesn't it? And on the inside, it's not like very inside, it is oh, like a pattern in and of itself. It's lovely, isn't it? So I was really quite happy with that outcome. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't used any of the bigger ones yet. But they're, they're no different from the. Is it Nifty Knitter? Yeah, the Nifty Knitter loom set, but without the holes, the extra holes, and without the holes in the bottom either. I've no idea what I was thinking of, but I think I can't decide whether I did a good thing or not. Uh, I think because I was on eBay, there was one item left in the UK. There were so many watches, and I just thought, okay, let's go for it. <laughs> so I ended up just showing the box for the outside. <laughs> The Martha Stewart configurable loom. Now the options that are available because you get the best of both worlds, you get the large gauge and the small gauge and I thought great and you get all these options and the potential for weaving as well. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Um, and I saw on one of the, I think actually it's Pam Loomer's group, the Loomaholics or something, somebody made some socks on the 24 peg loom, that green one that I've just put down there. I thought that looks really good because she said she used two strands of double knit, and I thought, oh, I'll just want it. I want to use one strand. So I started to do the configuration on here. <laughs> and they did say, um, her, when I, meant, I spoke to her about it, and she said, not Pam, the girl who did the pattern, she said 48 pegs might be too big because I thought, well, it's half the size of that. And she might be right. So I'm really going to have to learn about gauge, because I haven't got a clue. But it, it's been interesting to do that, nevertheless. Yeah. So I like the configurations, the potential for it. But you see some complaints on um, the internet about the pegs working loose. They do. And I'm constantly having to go around and just make sure they're in there. And some pegs, where is it? That one. If you can see it very well. It looks like a wonky tooth. This one here. And the reason why, and you can see why, is because it's not slotted in there very well. And I did try and push it in hard and it just wouldn't go in very evenly. And that's why. So you've just got to be aware that these pegs have the potential to work loose. Unlike these, which are quite stable. These are remarkably stable. So somebody somewhere has got something right here. The other thing I noticed was that pick, and it started to bend. So there I am. This is much better. Now that is actually just the pick out of the big, the first round loom set I've got. 
I haven't even used the pick out of the other two, the long loom set or this one yet. But they look pretty much like this anyway. This looks kind of feeble. It's not up to much, is it? But never mind, at least I've got three other picks to pick from. <laughs> yeah, um, three other picks to use. So there's no issue really. But yeah, I think I'll just be mindful of whatever I'm doing on there. And I've no idea whether I'm going to continue this because it was just to mess around with. But I really have to figure out gauge, I think, before I proceed with anything else because I've, I've learned some of the stitches. Um, yeah, I'll have to learn about gauge. If you look on Ravelry, there's a pattern, a free loom pattern called um, Poppy Neckerchief. Of course, I didn't do it in any kind of red colour. From that uh, that loom hat I did. It's here, so I'll start here because it, it goes quite long. And it's got crochet edging there. And I'm so glad actually it's got a crochet edging because one edge, this edge looked very neat. Well, this edge, when, when it came out the loom, I thought, how did I drop that stitch at the end? There was one particular stitch that dropped. Luckily, it never unraveled. So I got a little uh, lockable stitch marker and just held it there. And then when it came out, when it came to, and it came to crochet it, I crocheted it in with the next stitch and problem solved and didn't make no any difference. So, so it does, it looks really lovely. Um, and it felt like the problem was I'm a needle knitter of course so all the while I was making this funny enough not the other one um, I was thinking oh I could so knit this on needles oh, it'd be so much faster to knit this on needles and that's not the point of it the point of it was just a different experience yeah I, I just felt I could do it so much quicker on needles but that wasn't the point to getting the loom set the loom set was just to give me some experience of doing other things and one thing my husband actually observed he said do you know you could put that down and you won't things won't fall off the needle well they won't because they're bone pegs uh, yeah that's exactly it because how many times have you put something down picked it back up and the whole thing's fallen off the needle and you're like ah when, when you drop stitches off needles it's a major emergency compared with dropping one if your crochet hook comes off the loop it's no big deal. It doesn't go very far, if at all. I don't know, there just doesn't seem to be the emergency and it's much calmer. But when you've got stuff on needles, it's like, it's major. It really is major. So I've decided what I'm going to do. I've got some whips to do. I don't know why I call it a whip because really they're hibernating and I must finish them off. One of them I'm really delighted because it's, it was an illusion cube blanket uh, knitted and I do like knitting honestly I do but I do prefer to crochet and I've seen something an alternative in crochet and I thought right switch that's it I've just switched it's gonna be just more I just prefer it um, it's really strange because I haven't been crocheting all that long since like October 2012 I taught, taught myself through YouTube and I was looking at small photos of some little um, samples I was doing. Oh, the tension's bad, the edging's bad. And I just thought, you know, I should work up a couple of swatches, swatches, not swatches, swatches and see the difference, see how I've progressed, because I really feel I have progressed. Anyway. Oh, by the way, if you're not a member of Ravelry, there's no way you can see, you can see things I've made. I've put photos and photo bookies, but look at that now. I'll leave the link in the box. Oh no, I'll show you this. My husband bought me a craft lamp for Christmas. So, that's, there's a big stand. It's, it says four in one, but I can't figure out where the other two come into it. So I could feasibly have this as a desk lamp, so I could take out this, the main tube that stands it up, right? And there's the big base, and then there's this. So it's got a magnifying glass and it's got <clears throat> a light. Now it's great for this room because when I'm working in here on an evening, the light is behind me and this bit 
in front of me is in shadow and that's not good. Um, I find it hard to see. I've got this, so there's this bit. And it's got a copy holder here for patterns. And it does have a, a nearly called an activity tray. Oh, it's not an activity tray. An accessory tray. <laughs> so you can put on your, like, your little nut, your stitch markers and whatnot. But I've read reviews on there where it just gets in the way. And when I looked at it, I assembled the thing. The compartments are quite small for the depth. So you can't really get your fingers into... You can, you can get your fingers in, but it's going to be a fiddle. And it's going to just be more annoying. I think if it was more... If it was shallower, it'd be, or, or the compartments were bigger, then it might not be so bad. But I don't think I'll use that bit, to be honest. On the, this craft lamp, it's, it can be either mains or battery. I've just put... Where have I put the battery back? Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't intend to use a battery on it. It's just for me, for here. So I can sit here, like, some evenings and do some work here at, a de at the desk. Yes. Oh, this is not the end. Uh, was it 23rd of December? Everything happened on the 23rd of December. <laughs> yeah, everything. No, it's just like... 23rd December, about 9.30, I was tucking CG into bed and the lights went out, the music went off. I had a power cut. Uh, yeah, some of the country um, did suffer power cuts and some even worse than us. Some had several days of no power. I mean, for us it was like six hours. So it was like half nine till like quarter past three. It was because of the storms, the wind and the rain. I wanted to show you this because it looks like we've got a lake outside our house. But that's not normally there, it's a river which has burst its banks. Sorry, not a river, a stream. Is there any difference between a river and a stream? But yeah, we've had rather a lot of rain recently. So, not good. Nevertheless, it does look pretty. And especially now, today, it's stopped raining, it's come out really bright. I went for a walk this morning, it was absolutely gorgeous. There's the hills over there. Absolutely lovely. Oh, do you know, you know when you shoot video and then you realise part of it hasn't recorded at all? Well, luckily it was only the last bit. <laughs> the bit that happened during the day on the 23rd was it? I got some more yarn. And no, I know I didn't need any yarn, but 50% off. I wasn't going to say no. So, anyway, the yarn I got was, it's not available in the UK until some kind of person sent it over. And luckily, yarn spirations do ship to the UK and it's. Da da, Karen Simply Soft. So, this colour is Chartreuse, if I pronounce that right. I hope I did. This colour is sage. Beautiful. It feels so remarkably different from like, uh, the Red Heart Super Saver. Is it Super Saver? Yeah, I think it is. Um, this is soft blue. This one's country blue. Also, it doesn't seem as doesn't seem like worsted. It seems like a, de a, a thick DK. Um, liked Country Peach. Isn't that beautiful? Victorian Rose. How lovely. And what's good about this as well, they also have a centre pull, just like the Red Heart. British Mark Yarn Manufacturers, please think of centre poles. We would really appreciate it. Um, plum wine. Isn't that nice? Lavender blue. And this one is bone. 
Yeah, they do seem um, much softer than the red heart. And I've also noticed that these are six ounces, whereas the, the red hearts that I got a few weeks ago, they were um, seven ounces. I've still yet to go through them. Yeah. I think that's everything. So I will sign off here and love you and leave you and get working on my projects and hopefully update you very soon with whatever else I'm doing. All right, take care. Bye-bye.